M. Night Shyamalan's back, baby, and he's here to prove that old habits die hard, as he's shown audiences time and time again that he doesn't learn anything from past experiences. Let's talk about old. Maybe it's because I'm growing older in age, so I'm getting a bit of a soft spot for M. Night. Or maybe it's because most movies in Hollywood today are creatively bankrupt. Whatever the reason, I didn't hate old. I just certainly didn't love it. I'm just kind of kind of in the middle on it. This is going to be spoiler free for a while. I'll let you know when I'm going to jump into that territory. If you've seen the film and want to hear my kind of more of a breakdown on it, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. We'll just spend a few minutes for people who are on the fence about seeing this movie and for some reason respect my opinions on films just to let you know what I thought. If you've seen the trailers, you know this revolves around a central group of characters on an island for the majority of the film, and for some reason, crazy stuff is happening. The kids are aging rapidly, cuts are healing themselves instantaneously, people are freaking out, stuff's going on, it's, it's pandemonium, it's chaos. The whole film focuses on this mystery the entire time, so think the TV show Lost, except for condensed into two hours instead of killing us slowly over the course of six or seven seasons. There's no question the guy's got talent, and he's certainly very creative. That's, that's one of the reasons I appreciate his films, even if I think he rarely sticks the landing these days. I was amazed at how bad the dialogue still continues to be in his films, like he's never had an actual conversation with a human before. There were points in the film where a person would say something and it would be completely off base from the last thing that was said, almost like he cut chunks of scenes out of his film, but he left some of the responses in place. I just couldn't understand some of the reactions. And that's just across the board, not just the dialogue, but how people respond to situations around them. I'll jump more into that in spoilers, but I'm just gonna say, as a parent, if something happened to my child that was completely insane, I'd be incredibly concerned. I wouldn't take my eyes off my kids. These parents are a little bit more, a little bit more chill about it and things that shouldn't shock them as much make them freak out. So it's just this weird dichotomy between the two people. Dichotomy. Dichotomy? Hmm. I tried to sound smart there and it didn't come off that way. I could reshoot that. Look up the word. Dichotomy. And we'll just keep all this in. Old is a really beautiful film and it was cool seeing it on the big screen for sure. M. Night, though, still has those tricks that he's known for that, that let you know it's one of his movies. For instance, I remember an Unbreakable scene it as a, a teen, I believe, and there, there was a shot pretty early on where the camera focuses on a TV set, and you just see the silhouette of the characters in the background. It sits on this shot for, like, it feels like an eternity. It was probably 30 seconds or so. There's no point of it. It's just, you know, for the sake of being artsy, I guess. There's so much nonsense in his films where it's either a red herring or it's just him playing with the camera angles. I don't, I don't really understand it. I don't think anybody can really determine what's going on in M. Night's head. There are shots in this film where there's two characters talking and one's like very out of frame. You only see basically the nose and maybe like half the profile of another person. And then the central character is out of focus eating something in the background and it sits on this for 20 seconds. There's no point to a shot like that. And most other people that would submit something like that, uh, the audience would be thinking, okay, this is like D level footage. This is the footage that should have been on the chopping block, but instead M. Night's like, yeah, that's the one I want. That's the shot I want to go with. That's rampant throughout this film. I can't remember what they're classifying this film as a thriller, maybe a, like a scary horror thriller. I don't know. It's not scary at all. There's, there's not a single scare in the film. There are a couple of jump scare attempts early on. They are comically bad and it does that same lame trope movies have been doing for the last 20 or so years where, you know, like the mom turns and a kid's there suddenly and the music just goes Bruh! and the kid's just like, hi. It's so lame, it's so lazy, and it, they didn't work the two or three attempts that they were in there. There's a little disturbing imagery, but it's stuff we've seen so many times, like body dysmorphia type of stuff. It's it's kind of comically done though, so you're not you're not really like invested in the fear. It's more just okay. Well, that's that's happening. Overall, I like the idea of this film. I think it's an interesting concept. Of course, there's a twist at the end. Does he nail it? 
mm, I mean, it's fine. I think it was satisfying enough when the whole film hinges on the final 10 minutes being, you know, a satisfying reveal. I think it was fine. It was adequate. It wasn't something, you know, amazing by any means, but it didn't leave me sour, okay? It doesn't end on some artsy bullshit, you know, like cut to black instantly. We don't know what happens. It is explained, and that's enough for me. For the pervs out there, like myself, there are a couple shots of uh, women's behinds in this. They're attractive women. It's, it's certainly something worth watching. Uh, and if that's enough to get you to the theaters, well, there you have it. You heard it here first. A couple, a couple of ass shots in the film. So what we have here again, folks, is a very inconsistent M. Night film. It's not glass levels of terrible. I hated that movie. If you liked it, I, there's, no, there's nothing I can say that's going to convince you otherwise. This is far better than that, but I think it takes a big step down from Split, which I think is one of his better films. So yeah, I guess to summarize, it's an M. Night Shyamalan film. He hasn't learned much over the years of, of what works for his type of storytelling and what doesn't. I really wish... He would have someone else step into the writing room, take his cool ideas, and just make them, make them better. Flesh them out a little bit more, because there's tons of holes you can poke in this thing. For my final verdict, I'm giving old 28 out of 40, The Last Airbender DVDs. I haven't forgotten about that film, you son of a bitch. One of the worst TV show adaptations to movies I've ever seen in my life. Alright, that out of the way, for those who've seen this or just don't have any desire and want to hear me rant for a little bit, here is my breakdown for old. The film focuses on a few different couples who go to this resort. They're, they either found it online or they were given a brochure to this mystery place. It looks like paradise. I mean, it's gorgeous. They arrive, they get these, they get these uh, custom drinks to their profile, whatever that means. I guess they filled out some pretty intense questionnaire. And uh, from there, they just kind of lounge for the day. Um, they have two kids. Uh, I believe the ages are 6 and 12. They, they befriend a kid on the island who says his dad works there. This is, this is something that I knew would be important later on. I also had a feeling these drinks were a little sus too. I, I wasn't sure where that was going to go. We also find out kind of loosely that a lot of the residents here seem to have uh, some sort of a condition. Whether they're um, fainting or, you know, they, they have some sort of a appendage that's bursting. Or whether they have something growing inside them that's cancerous. Actually, I don't think anybody had an appendage burst. You know, I just made that one up. We're going to keep going. Concierge informs the guests that there's a special section of the island that only certain groups of people get access to. And these guys are privy to that information. So they get in a vehicle driven by yours truly, M. Knight, and he takes them to their destination, kicks their asses out, says the beach is down there. I'm not helping you. Here's a big basket for you to take full of food. Enjoy your stay. And then he bolts. As soon as they pass through this rocky area, they're stuck on the island. They can't go back or they black out. This leads to my first question of many. The overall plot to this film, brace yourselves, is that these people are basically guinea pigs. They're test subjects. And the island itself, the rock that surrounds it is very old. It's old timey rock that's been around for, for, for centuries. And because the water levels have, have lowered so much, this whole area was underwater. And somehow the effects of the rock in this area are messing with people's cells. They're aging them up rapidly. So when people try to leave and go back through the cave, that, that area acts as some sort of a barrier because the pressure is too much on their, their minds, on their heads, and they faint. Here's my question. These people faint constantly trying to go this way, that way, get off the island. And then they end up back in the sand. Well, we find out there's nothing supernatural going on here. It's all scientifically based, which I think is M. Night's first mistake. Because science, I don't think science is a strong suit. They're being studied and monitored 24-7. Uh, because those cocktails they were given at the beginning actually contain hopeful cures for their ailments. Because they age so rapidly, we're talking like a full lifetime within 48 hours of being there. The scientists are able to quickly know if their concoction works or not. And then they can just churn out more bodies, you know, every day, every few days. We've established it's scientifically based. There's nothing supernatural going on. So how do these people faint inside of a cave and then wake up on the beach again? The explanation could be that other people find them fainted and go in and get them, but then they would pass out. At one point, all of them go different ways and they all end up back on the beach. It doesn't make sense. 
It's possible I missed something, but I truly don't think so. I think this is just a, a massive plot hole in the film. Another thing is we've established that fingernails and um, hair are, they don't have like living organisms, they, they don't have cells. So the hot blonde keeps her luscious locks while she starts to age rapidly. The issue is we see them deteriorate into bone. The bone should just stay. There's no reason why the bone wouldn't, but that also breaks down to ash. I, I don't believe that there's anything living in bone, right? Why, why would the bone go so quickly? Well, the reason is because M. Night needs it to. Otherwise, the beach would be littered with bone. It would be a bone graveyard. Since the human body responds so quickly to things, all sorts of nonsense takes place. We, we have a woman's tumor growing like to the size of a basketball in the course of a couple minutes, a couple seconds actually. A woman gets pregnant and, and delivers a baby in, in the course of, you know, 10 minutes and the baby dies instantly because it needed to eat right away. Um, but here's a question. If all this happens so quickly to the body, wouldn't all these people die of skin cancer within, say, you know, an hour? They're outside in the elements. The sun's baking down on them. I, they, they're not putting sunscreen on. I would assume that they would just fry in the sun. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I feel like that's something that's a legitimate concern here. Everybody on this fucking island dies, except for two people, the kids, who aged, I'd say, a lot slower than the adults, for sure. Uh, I, I, I don't know what was going on there. Trent, I believe is the boy's name, decides to decipher a coded message that that kid I mentioned earlier at the resort gave him. He knows he likes puzzles. So he deciphers it and it says something about the coral and how his father doesn't like the coral. We see this beautiful white coral out in the uh, ocean and that's when the kids realize that might protect us from whatever is going on with these rocks. It might block it. So they swim in there. It's a whole thing and that's how they get off the island. I'm not sure why these scientists didn't figure out a way to get rid of that coral. But whatever. I mean, you know, what are the odds, right? The last thing I have to point out is M. Night's bizarre fetish with job occupations. One of the boy's ticks, I guess, is he likes to introduce himself, ask people their names and their job occupations. Fine, whatever. It, 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 was, it was kind of funny. I knew it would come into play at some point. What's really odd, though, is everybody seems to do this. Uh, the woman at one point's like, I need you to trust me, so here's what I do for a living. Some of it made sense, and other times it was just, what, what is going on? Why are you so obsessed with people saying what they do for a living? I didn't know if it was a commentary about how, you know, life moves so fast, and we need to slow down and appreciate it, and we shouldn't be so obsessed with working, you know, the nine to five. And, and, and making our entire identity about what we do. Actually, you know what? I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he was doing. And because M. Night's so ham-fisted in his approach, it just comes off as sloppy. Those are my thoughts on the film. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was entertaining. It's silly. It's M. Night Shyamalan. It's what you're going to get. Let me know what you thought if you saw it in the comments. Like the video if you had a good time. And make sure to subscribe to Adam Does Movies. I put out videos constantly now. So it's a good time. I'd like to see you stick around. Thanks again for watching the video. You can also find me on my second channel, Adam Olinger, where I post nonsensical rants and video game Let's Plays from Twitch. That's right, I'm on Twitch at Adam Olinger. I don't stream often, but it's a nice break from doing this and doing my actual nine to five job and, and just being you know a family man. So I stream pretty late at night, once a week usually. You can find me on TikTok at Adam Does Movies, and you can even support me on Patreon at Adam Does Movies or right here on YouTube with that join button. A lot of, a lot of things happening.